Um, so what's today's topic, Dr. Hunter? Uh, today you wanted to talk about um, isotopes and relative abundance and how one calculates the uh, molar mass of a, an element uh, based on how many isotopes there are and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, if you ever... So I'm looking at the periodic table right now. So what should I be looking at? Yeah, so um, whenever you look at the periodic table, you know that each element has its own molar mass, which is the number always on the bottom of each square. So we know that, for example, boron has 10.811 grams per mole. Carbon has 12.011 grams per mole and so on and so forth. You can see all of these numbers for every single element on the periodic table. And so when we're taught a lot about how to use these numbers, how to use them for stoichiometry, what they mean, and how they're important for calculations. But I think one thing that kind of confused me when I first started learning about this is um, why are there so many decimal places? Well, let me rephrase that actually. Why are these masses, why do they have decimal places at all in the first place? Why aren't they? Why aren't they whole numbers, right? Yeah, clean whole numbers. Yeah. Because I, I'm not particular, particularly sure about, I know that the mass of a proton is measured to be in one AMU, an AMU is a- Atomic mass unit. Atomic mass unit, which is- Kind of a defined number, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a clean whole number. And a neutron is a little bit more than one AMU, but it's it's something like 1.000000. And I'm not, I don't really remember how many zeros, but eight or one point something, just a little bit more, but it's practically one one AMU again. And then the mass of an electron is so small that many times we neglect it in calculating an atom's mass. And so if all of the parts of an atom are whole numbers, one AMU plus one AMU plus one AMU, then why, why, why in the world do we have atomic masses that are 0 0.5, 0 0.7, or anything like that. Even with carbon and even with hydrogen, when when there are so few protons and neutrons, they, hydrogen is still 1.008 grams per mole, or carbon is 12.011 grams per mole, if I recall correctly. All that is entirely true. Yeah, it's uh, it. Uh... It makes no sense unless we have one other piece of information, right? So all of those issues are of protons, neutrons having a mass of essentially one, electrons having a mass of zero. Um, all should lead to atomic masses on the periodic table as being nothing but whole numbers. We can see that underneath each of the element names, there are a bunch of masses and none of them are whole numbers, basically. I mean, there may be, maybe there is a couple on there somewhere, but um, they're not. And that's because somewhere along the line, somebody made the decision, or a group of chemists or, or and scientists made the decision that we were gonna name existing elements based on the number of protons. But in nature, there are, chemical species that have different number of protons and different numbers of neutrons. And so we name them 
based on the number of uh, protons, but they can have a different number of neutrons. So let's take a look at, at boron, for instance. Boron has an atomic number of five and its mass number is 10.8. What that really means is that boron is made up of some borons that have five protons and five neutrons, and some boron is made up of boron atoms that have five protons and six neutrons. And so some butron, some butron, some <laughs> boron, some borons are five plus five to make 10, and some borons are five plus six to make 11. For boron, some borons have five protons and five neutrons to make a total mass of 10 AMUs. But there are some borons, well, all borons have five protons, but some borons have six neutrons to make a mass of 11 atomic mass units. And as we saw on the periodic table, let's go back to that for just a second. Overall, all boron in the universe is 10.811. So we're headed towards 10.811. So let's bear that, bear that in mind. So, okay, that's our target number that's on the periodic table. So we have some borons that have five neutrons and some borons that have six neutrons. It just so happens that in nature, this 10 AMU boron makes up about 19.9% of all boron. And the boron that's 11 is 80.1%. You add those two numbers to get together and you get 100%. So one of the things that we know or that we've discovered is that in nature, boron has two isotopes, one of them with five protons and five neutrons, one of them with five protons and six neutrons. And together, they make up all of the, all of the boron that, that we find in nature. And so you might be able to look at 80 and 20 and say, hey, look, 80% of the boron weighs 11. 20% of the boron weighs 10. And you might say, oh, well, this number is 80% of the way towards 11, right? There's the 0.81. That's 80% of the way towards the number 11. So the math calculation that we're going to do in two seconds time is just a way of saying, Let's calculate what, uh, what number do we get if we take 80% of 11 and 20% of 10 and add them together. That's where we're headed. Okay? All right. So I'm going to take 19.9% uh, of 10 AMU, and I'm going to take 80.1% of 11 AMU. And if I do that, I go 0 0.199 times 10, and I go 0 0.801 times 11, And this, I should be able to do this one in my head, but I didn't, I had to actually punch it into my calculator. I'm a little embarrassed to say. It's 1.99 AMUs. And this one is 8.811 AMUs. And if I add those two together, I get 10.80 AMU, which is perilously really stinking close to the number that we were targeted. And so 
all the number on the periodic table means, this 10.811 is the average. It's really called a weighted average because it's, it's not, it doesn't treat 10 and 11 as being equal. If they were equal, it would be 10.5. So if it was 50% and 50%, then you know it would be 10.5, but it's not 50%. It's actually 80% of 11 and 19.9% of 10. Um, so that, and when you add up those two results, you get 10.80 AMUs. And so it's, when we see this number on the periodic table, this 10.811, it's the weighted average of the isotopes for the two common isotopes of boron. Yep. What do you think oh. of that? Yeah, I think that's great. Just, just all the mass numbers are weighted averages of all the isotopes of that element. That basically just sums it up. Right, right, right. Um, okay, all right, let's do, let's do chlorine. So let's go to the periodic table for just a second and find chlorine over here. Okay, here is chlorine. Chlorine is element number 17. And it looks like it has 35.453 AMUs is what it shows on the periodic table. Okay. So, so that, that's where we're headed. Clearly that's not the number 35. It's not the number 36. It must come from more than one isotope of chlorine being present. So let me uh, stop the share, bring, uh, bring up, uh, pin this video here. So chlorine, Element number 17, it has, um, a, a, on the periodic table, it says 35.453 AMUs. Clearly that's not a whole number. So it's made up of a couple different isotopes. And chlorine uh, comes in two uh, isotopes. We can have chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. And so what that tells us is that if there's, if it's chlorine, it must have 17 protons. Chlorine 35 must have 18 neutrons, right? Yep. Chlorine 37 has 17 protons and it must have 20 neutrons. And one of the things that we have discovered in nature is that for chlorine 35, this is 75.77% of all chlorine. And chlorine 37 is 24.23% of all chlorine. So you might be able to say, Hey, look at this. I've got chlorine 35 and I've got chlorine 37. Most of it is 35. If it was a 50-50 mixture, the average weight would be somewhere, would be halfway between 35 and 37. If it was a 50-50 mixture, it would be chlorine 36, right? They have a, a mass of about 36. But the actual mass is 35.45. Oh yeah, that makes sense because most chlorine, apparently 75% of it weighs 35. So the mass is actually three quarters of the way down from the difference between 37 and 35. So this number 35.453 seems reasonable based on these two percentages. And yeah. but we can do, we, we can do the exact same calculation that we did that we did before. Which is to say that um, 75.77% of chlorine has a mass of 35 AMUs. And we could say that 24.23% of chlorines have a mass of 37 AMUs. Okay? Yeah. And so I would say to, to find out what the contribution of each is, well, let's see, 0. 0.7577 times 35 AMUs 
equals 26.52 AMUs. And I could say 0.2423 times 37 AMUs equals 8.97 AMUs. So, and if I add those two together, I get 35.49 AMUs for chlorine. Which, again, really nice and close to the value that's on the periodic table. 35.453, 35.49. And if you're wondering about the, so it looks really plausible what I've done in terms of calculating a weighted average of the isotopes. And um, clearly when they, you, they developed our periodic table, they had these percentages to higher precision than what I was able to use, what I've used, right? So that's why, um, why these numbers are different, but you can see they're really headed exactly in the right, in the, in the correct, correct direction. Yeah, certainly. And sometimes some of the bigger elements will have more than just two isotopes. And so that's why perhaps some of the numbers are skewed more in one direction than another. Sometimes there are very rare extreme isotopes that have 20, 30, 40 more neutrons than the most common isotope of that element is. And so that's why we have kind of a huge range of these mass numbers for elements. Right, right, yeah. Um, and yes, so, so if it would, we've chose probably the two simplest to do the calculation on today because the percentages are, it's possible to estimate what, what, what the value might look like based on these, uh, um, the percentages of the, of the two isotopes. But if you've got three or four, the procedure is exactly the same. Take the percentage of the isotope, multiply it by the mass, take the percentage of the isotope, multiply it by the mass, take the percentage, of the, multiply it by the mass, and add those up, and you should get something very close to what's on the periodic table. Yep. And I think that's mass number and isotopes, really. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Dr. Hunter. Talk to you later.